Uh, hey guys, thank you for started. Now it's just a little bit after seven, um, but uh, we're still probably going to have people walking in. The doors downstairs are currently locked, so we're going to be having people need to go down periodically to go pick people up. But I think we should get started as um, there's two things that are going on tonight. So first off, uh, what we're going to probably do tonight is something a little bit different. Uh, normally we have one talk through the whole night, or just a little bit of an introduction at the start of the night, um, and then a talk, and then mingling at the end for anybody who has been in our group before. Uh, but today we're going to try something new. Top Hat Monocle has, uh, has graciously uh, donated their office space here for us to use for tonight's meeting, uh, both because they want to publicize, hey, we're looking and what are doing and broadcasting what they do, um, and two, because they have uh, a great web sockets demonstration to, uh, to give to us, which is, I'm sure, probably on the top of everybody's to-do list and to learn. I know it's on the top of mine. Um, so that's what they're doing today with us today. Uh, so what we're doing is we're having smaller groups break off from the main group today, uh, 10 to 15 people in the boardroom, and then going through like a small little group back and forth, uh, about three times tonight, depending on how many people go in and out, the whole thing. Uh, the rest of us, we can be out here, there's tons of chairs, networking computers, the network setup, mingle, talk about industry, what you guys are doing, the latest techniques, uh, all those different things. Uh, that mingling that we generally do afterwards, we're going to do during the time here. Uh, we do have a Google Hangout going. Um, hopefully this does work out uh, well. We've got four viewers right now. Um, and then this will be broadcast on YouTube afterwards. But uh, what we'll do is we'll have this hook up to the TV so that anybody that's sitting down and mingling can also see what's going on. So if you have participated, you can kind of do a refresher. Did I miss something? Didn't I miss something? Um, and then for those who, of you who haven't been in there, obviously it'll be that Kickstarter. So you'll have questions lined up beforehand as well. There are a couple of people from Top Hat Monocle here tonight that I'm sure can answer your questions. All be wearing top hats, I'm sure no. Yeah, they won't. That would but they do. Yeah, that would be, awesome. that would that be cool. Um, we do have uh, sponsorships for tonight, but they do got to go through a couple little things. Microsoft, first of all, I gave up the last two shirts today. Um, but they do. They did uh, donate some money for us to give away some stuff. So uh, about halfway through, when the food gets here, yes, there's going to be food as well, drinks, food. Uh, both pizza and veg veggies and fruit. Um, during that time, or about halfway through, I'm going to do a uh, Twitter Twitter chicken dinner for several things. Uh, two being these great, great books, um, HTML and CSS by John Duckett. Um, he and I have been going through a couple times online discussing things. Great, great book. Uh, I must admit, for anybody who does development work and is like, I don't want to buy a book for HTML or coding because it changes all the time. Uh, one of the great things that I found, at least with this book, is that it's a dictionary, right? If you wanted to know, like, for instance, what uh, HSL and HSLA is, it's a basic definition of how to use it, what browser support it, all those different things. Great, great book, and a lot of the stuff hasn't changed in forever, but it's something that just you love to, to go through and prove and be like, oh, that's how I was doing that wrong, or yes, I can show somebody how to do this right. So I've got two of those tonight. Um, I've got a few FITC. Uh, is another sponsor, obviously, through a couple of nights. We've got a screens ticket to give away tonight. Uh, we have a code that I can say right now, which is going to be the HTML TO code for anybody who wants to take away a card for FITZ. 10% off screen tickets, um, but we all want to have that free ticket, obviously. Um, and I have some t-shirts to go as well. So we've got that. Screens is a, a, a large event uh, held in Toronto on you don't have the date on here, Lindsay. Um, September 26th and 7th. Thank you. September 26th and 7th. Um, so September. And that yeah. is essentially designed for developers and designers to get together to talk about different streams, right? Different uh, resolutions, density, a large scale. Uh, small. They've got a great set of line, uh, speakers already lined up. Um, FITC.ca slash screens. Um, I'm not on a speaker's list, but fine. Uh, they've got some amazing speakers instead of so that's good for them. Um, but great event, great, great event. So that's great. So does anybody have any questions before we get started? Nobody? Awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the boardroom or finalize setting it up, make sure we have the food downstairs to bring up for somebody. Uh, I'm going to invite you guys all, jump on a Wi-Fi network, start mangling, start interacting. I'll see if I can get the pops and stuff like that set up as well while we're doing that. 
Um, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll break off uh, in probably about 15, 20 minutes into the boardroom. Um, but before we break out, I guess i got to actually introduce uh, our great speaker of the night, or our great interactive guy tonight, Michael. So on your line up, we'll say hi, introduce yourself, and talk. Yeah, so I'll give you a quick summary of what we're at these days. Uh, so I'm one of the founders of uh, uh, Top Hat uh, Monocle. Um, I guess in case, for those of you that didn't get a chance to check out the website, what we do is uh, we provide a web-based platform that teachers use inside the classroom to engage their students. And so students use their smartphones, laptops, uh, cell phones, pretty much any device they happen to have um, to participate in various activities in class. So uh, as I'm sure you guys experience, as I did, uh, normally when you go to lectures, you're just kind of sitting there trying to say, wait. Uh, with our tool, the professor can do uh, all these different activities to make it much more get you interesting. So that's the kind of stuff that we work on. Um, and as, as you can imagine, one of the things that we use pretty heavily is because of the, you know, the real-time data going through is web sockets. So I guess we can do a tutorial on how, uh, how that stuff works. Um, I guess the, I, I was aiming the level of the tutorial to people that kind of know JavaScript, have done web programming, haven't done anything with Node or, um, or uh, uh, web sockets. That's one. Um, so Hopefully that's useful for you guys. I don't know what level kind of to expect uh, here, but that's where it's that. Um, and we'll do it in kind of the two or three shifts. Uh, you, we can fit probably 10 to 12 people in that uh, boardroom. So basically, we'll take yeah, just take a shift and then uh, we'll do a tutorial. It'll be identical in each case. Um, yeah, except the first one will be the best one. <coughs> Actually, the first one will probably be much longer because I'll be passing around. Um, yeah, so uh, cool. I guess that's, uh, that's everything. And uh, I'll bring the pizza up and then start. Cool. Uh, raise up hands just so that uh, you're aware of who here works with JavaScript on a weekly basis. Raise your hand. Daily basis. Keep raising your hand. Hourly basis. Keep raising your hand. <laughs> that's your audience. Nice. Cool. Okay. Last time. Um, okay, so I guess what I'll do is basically start sort of really from the very basics and, and work towards a kind of Hello World uh, uh, Node.js app and then uh, uh, a basic sort of WebSockets uh, uh, implementation there uh, just so to show you kind of how, how to do it. It's pretty trivial uh, to uh, to do. I mean, it's, it's probably like total like 20 lines of code, all like client and server side. Um, so it's actually pretty cool how simple it is to, to do this stuff these days. Um, okay, so... Uh, before I begin, there's actually a um, a project, uh, sorry, a GitHub account that you can uh, uh, go to to access kind of a working project, uh, and that project has like a bunch of different things in it, including uh, kind of uh, you know a Node.js app, uh, WebSockets app, uh, and an example of a game that uh, uh, you know that's written in um, uh, in Node.js with WebSockets. So if you go here, you can. Uh, download a working version of that. Uh, so what I'm, I'm not going to go through implementing the entire thing because that would take a ton of time. So I'll just do like a really basic implementation. Yes. Yeah, so what's the Wi-Fi network? Oh, it's uh, THM Airport something. And then the password is uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine zero. Um, yeah, so this is the GitHub account. If you just search Top M Monocle on GitHub, there's like HTML5 meetup is the uh, public repository that, uh, that's there. Um, and I guess I'll show you like the, um, uh, the app. It's pretty... Uh, Uh, what is running on? Yeah, pretty zero 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 should work. Uh oh, maybe. Yeah, 
There we go. Um, so uh, this is just a, a demonstration of a WebSockets game. So it's actually a multiplayer uh, snake game. So actually, if you type in uh, a thing into another browser, so let me open up another browser. Uh, you see, there's two snakes, and they're both interacting, you know, over my uh, my my network here. So uh, this is, I guess, you know, it's pretty cool. But this kind of thing takes uh, maybe, I don't know, like a hundred something lines of code to put together, uh, which is kind of cool. How powerful WebSockets is that you can do something like this, you know, real time kind of interaction and some nice graphics stuff. Um, with just like a, a very small amount of code. If you were doing this with uh, uh, like you know Ajax uh, polling or, or kind of more traditional web techniques, this would be like a huge pain in the ass to to do. Um, but yeah, now it's it's pretty easy. Uh, cool. So uh, I guess with that, I'll talk a bit a bit about kind of the um, uh, kind of the Node.js and, and WebSockets. And then I'll start pretty much from scratch. So uh, Node.js, I guess, uh, how many of you guys are familiar with the um, kind of uh, uh, web frameworks in general, like Python or Ruby on Rails? Or I guess everyone kind of generally knows what it is. So uh, Node.js is a fairly new uh, web framework and HTTP uh, server that um, uh, operates in a very different way than uh, uh, kind of traditional uh, web servers. Um, the, there's a couple of interesting aspects about it. So one uh, pretty cool, really cool thing about it is the fact that it's in JavaScript. So that uh, means that uh, you actually uh, write code on the server side in the same language that you write it on the client side. So you write JavaScript on the in your browser and you write JavaScript on the server side, which is just kind of um, I guess convenient from a development perspective because you don't need to sort of context switch uh, like that. And you could do cool stuff like pass functions back and forth between the client side and the server side. So that's that's actually kind of uh, pretty interesting. Um, and then the, the other thing that's uh, uh, neat about it is that uh, it's uh, uh, asynchronous, which is uh, very different than tr traditional uh, web frameworks like PHP or, or Python or whatever. Um, in particular, what that, I guess, so the way you would typically write uh, a web app in, you know, let's say Python, is you would write your view and then Inside the view, you would you know you would do a database call. You would wait for the database call to finish, and then you would render a template. You'd wait for that to finish, and then you'd return your data and your render template to the client. So it's like this blocking step by step process. Um, with Node.js, it's a kind of completely different um, way of doing things. Everything is done with callbacks, and it's event driven. So it's like you know the view you enter a view by by doing the HTTP request, then you Start your database request, and then you set up a callback for when that database request to uh, to you know uh, finishes. Then you you return back to start continue processing the uh, um, the uh, the view. So everything is kind of event driven and asynchronous, synchronous, which is just a different, very different style of programming than uh, uh, traditional um, um, uh, I guess programming styles that, that people are used to. And it tends to be uh, very well fitting for kind of modern web apps, which are very kind of, uh, they're almost desktop class applications, right, where you have something where like stuff is constantly changing on the client side, so you, it's all kind of uh, uh, driven by user actions rather than the traditional kind of static page apps where you click on a link and it takes you to a static page, you click on another link, it takes you to another static page. Um, anyway, so hopefully that made some sense. It's just, it, the big thing is JavaScript and it's asynchronous. And then someone actually pointed out last time, which is a good point, that Node.js, one of the limitations that it has, kind of a pain in the ass, is that it's uh, uh, single-threaded. So it actually, you know, with Python or PHP, it like spawns multiple threads. They can handle requests uh, um, simultaneously. So you can have like, you know, 100 people hitting the same server. Where with uh, Node.js, it's single-threaded. So that's, that's why it has to be event-driven, because if you wait for the entire uh, requests to be finished processing, you're blocking potentially everyone else is trying to access uh, that uh, server. Um, so again, that's just kind of a limitation of, of Node.js. So to scale it, you need to basically add more machines rather than uh, uh, spawn more threads of, of Node. Um, okay, so uh, to install Node.js is really straightforward. You basically just, uh, it, it just it's incredibly easy these days. You just go to nodejs.org, like download, and then it'll install uh, Node and the package manager and everything 
that you need to, to run it um, on your computer, you know, whatever operating uh, system uh, you're using. Um, there's two things that you need to kind of know about. There's Node.js, the server and framework itself, and then there's NPM, which is the package management system for Node.js. Um, uh, it's like, you know, um, AppGet or, or whatever, same kind of thing, but for Node specifically. Um, so you can install modules and whatever for, for that. Uh, and it gets installed automatically when you um, uh, download Node. Uh, okay, so that's uh, Node.js. Now, uh, the uh, the other library that we'll be talking about today is uh, Socket.io. Oops. So, sorry. So, oh. um, did you say something? Or? No. <laughs> Uh, so the other library we're talking about is Socket.io. Uh, I kind of, I sort of debated going, you know, doing WebSockets from scratch, just in like your JavaScript, like using the browser uh, standards, uh, versus using an existing uh, library that abstracts it and makes it kind of nice to work with. Uh, and I decided to, you know, to demonstrate the, the library, mainly because this is the way you do it sort of in real life. If you were actually doing, uh, you know, a, a WebSockets project, you, you should really be using this library. Uh, for various reasons, uh, mainly because it handles browsers that don't support uh, WebSockets, as you know, some older browsers don't support it, so it gracefully falls back and is able to work with those browsers. Um, okay, so uh, just to give you a bit of an overview of what WebSockets are, basically, traditional HTTP requests, the way they uh, work is, uh, you know, you you uh, you have your your web browser and it, it, when you want to do an HTTP request, you construct the browser constructs this big header that contains all the information about what kind of information it's requesting. You know where where that uh, data is going. Uh, you send that giant header with like a little bit of data, and then the server generates another giant header, and then that comes back to your browser. So for static apps where you're just loading individual pages and kind of there's not a lot of dynamic stuff going on in them, that's not a big deal. Like because you're you know I guess you're not doing that many page requests. But for dynamic apps that do lots of back and forth requests, you know, between the client and server, um, you know, you have like 80% or 90% of your traffic between your app and your uh, uh, your, your browser is like these stupid headers. Like you're just you're constantly sending these headers uh, back and forth, um, and it's it has to be um, initiated by the browser. In, in other words, in order to get information from the server, you need to kind of send the request to the server. You can't get information pushed to you from the uh, the server. Um, anyway, so that's that's the limitation that WebSockets was meant to alleviate. What WebSockets does is it starts off by sending a regular kind of HTTP request, uh, and then it sends a magic blob of text that upgrades that HTTP request into a socket, into a WebSockets connection. Uh, and then what a WebSocket connection does is it gives you a full duplex channel to just send arbitrary strings of data to the server without having to do any additional requests. So you can, you know, the server can send you data and you can send data to the server kind of back and forth without having to do lots of uh, additional uh, requests. Um, does that make sense? Everyone? Really pretty clear? Um, so it's kind of powerful because you can do, as I said, you can do push notifications to the client side from the server without doing requests. You can uh, send lots of data without the overhead of headers. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a fairly powerful kind of system. Um, okay, so Socket.io implements the WebSocket standard, but because lots of browsers don't support it, it, it has a way of kind of falling back to other ways of sort of simulating um, uh, web, not web sockets, but simulating that real-time push kind of activity. And there's various ways it does it. One way is it uses flash sockets, so it has like a little flash widget that lives inside the HTTP uh, page, and the, the HTML page, and um, uh, that flash widget does your socket, the full duplex communication stuff. Uh, it also uh, falls back on um, long polling, which is basically where you initiate an HTTP request connection and keep it alive for like 30 seconds so you can send kind of data uh, back and forth uh, and then kills it and then initiates another long-lived HTTP connection. Anyway, so these are like these dirty hacks that people used to use before WebSockets to simulate uh, uh, these kind of push notifications and, um, um, you know, uh, kind of back and forth communications without headers. Um, so it has nice fallbacks to those. And so it supports pretty much every browser, you know, ever. Uh, it's somewhere in the wiki here. Yeah, browser support. It's like all the way up to IE5 or something. Yeah, <laughs> uh, up to IE5 and like all, all the older browsers. Um, okay, so uh, 
uh, that's uh, that's Socket.io. Uh, and to find out about it, basically, you just go to, to the uh, wiki here or go to the GitHub uh, page for it, and it has, like, nice examples and everything you need to kind of get started uh, using uh, WebSockets. Um, okay, so I think that's everything sort of in terms of the background. So what I'll do now is I'll create sort of a simple Hello World kind of um, uh, Node.js application. Um, does that, uh, any questions so far? Cool. Um, the, I don't know, there's a, a phone ringing or something going on. Um, okay, so in order to do, uh, to create um, uh, a Node.js application, it's, it's pretty straightforward actually. Basically you just need one file, so you, you create a JavaScript file, usually it's called the server.js. Um, and that's basically a Node.js application. So uh, you can then fill that file with, you know, a few lines of uh, text, and it uh, works, uh, um, and, and it'll be like a nice HTTP app. So it's pretty um, uh, quick to get started. Um, in order to be able to do the socket I/O and um, uh, all the other stuff, uh, what, I, what we need to do first is to install a bunch of uh, uh, packages. So the way you install packages uh, for basic dependencies for this uh, this uh, web server that we'll be creating is by using the npm, so node package manager. So what you do is just npm install and then you do socket IO and it's going to install a socket IO. So it's pretty, uh, pretty sweet. Um, and it handles all the dependencies and everything else that uh, that it needs. So the second thing that uh, we need to do is uh, uh, install Express, which is just uh, kind of a nice, um, I guess, uh, web framework, like a very lightweight, simple uh, web framework uh, that uh, Node.js uses. So we'll install Express. Um, and uh, lastly, we'll install Jade. Um, what Jade is is a template rendering engine. That Node.js uses. So if you guys use, you know, Ruby on Rails or Python or whatever, you know, each one of those has its own or many different template rendering engines. So what that lets you do is take HTTP, HTTP or, or arbitrary documents, actually not just HTML documents, um, and you know, render them with like data and you know, inheritance and all kinds of fancy stuff. So that's just, um, so that's what Jade does. Is it's a template rendering engine for Node. Um, okay. So and when you install stuff locally, you can install packages locally or globally with Node Package Manager. Globally means it's available everywhere on your system. Uh, locally means it's just um, available in your um, uh, local directory. But when you install it locally, it puts it into this folder called Node Modules. So if you look inside Node Modules, you can see there's Express, Jade, and Socket.io, so all the stuff that we installed. Um, and inside there, there's like all the actual code uh, for those, uh, those modules. Um, okay. Is the, the default is local? Uh, the default is local. If you wanted to do global, you just do dash G and then it'll install it globally. Can you just do that? Uh, yes, I actually do. That's why it blew up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so now let's take a look inside of the server and uh, uh, do some stuff. So the way... So the first thing that you want to do when you're creating a, a new uh, Node.js application is you want to include these various modules. So, you know, in Python, it's like, uh, you know, uh, number sign import. In here, it's uh, you create a variable. Let's uh, call it HTTP uh, equals, and you do require. Require. Um, ah, typing without. Um, so HTTP is just a convenience thing for um, various methods Node has. HTTP is a kind of like the, the HTTP server that Node has built into it. Um, and then let's do uh, socket IO. Socket IO. And then uh, what else do we need? Express. Uh, express. Okay, so we've included our um, uh, modules. So now what we need to do is uh, today uh, soccer fail. 
Um, okay, so now we, what we can do is create um, uh, a server. So the way you create a server uh, is just to var. <laughs> need to learn how to type uh, var app, and then you can do press. And there you go, you've created a server. So literally, if you did app.listen to port 80, that's uh, that's a hello world. Like, right. that's that's a basic one. One of them says requires, and one of them says require. That uh, that's just my, another, my, one of my typos. So uh, this is the way you would normally do it. Uh, however, um, for various reasons, that th there's no basically uh, Express recently changed, uh, and the way the things that it returns now uh, make it incompatible with the way Socket.io accepts HTTP apps to bind itself to them. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So you need to do something different than this. This is the way you would normally do it, but uh, in um, uh, you you have to do it slightly differently. So actually, what you need to do is uh, this. It's kind of weird. Uh, our, the version of uh, Node.js and Socket.io and stuff that we have on our server didn't have this problem, so it took me like an hour to figure out what the hell was going on and why it stopped working. Um, so what you need to do is create your HTTP server with like create server, and then uh, uh, oh sorry no, uh, and then you pass in the app into here. Am I doing it right? Um, it's kind of weird, but that you just it just it's voodoo magic. You just have to do it this way, or else it doesn't work. Um, and actually, sorry, I think I need to do server dot listen when I'm doing it this way. Let me go check. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've created our HTTP server, so now what we need to do is create a handler for, you know, views, to create something that renders a template or, or whatever. So the way you do that is you just do app.get, so you could do app.post or app.get, um, so post will handle the, the post and get will handle a get in this case. Uh, we'll do the root URL and then you do function, a callback, uh, a function that actually handles this uh, um, uh, URL. So, and then here, what you do is, let's say, re, uh, result.send, hello world. And in theory, that should work. That's your basic kind of uh, uh, Node.js app. Does that make sense? Is everyone kind of generally on the same page? Yeah. Um, so in order to run it, you just do node uh, sudo node server. And it started, wait, uh, I'm in the wrong directory. <laughs> wait. Um, so you just say sudo node.js server, and there we go. And so if you go to this guy, which port that I listen to? I think port 80, right? Yeah. So there's your whole world. Is that any, any questions about that? Yeah. Um, okay. So we have our our basic node.js uh, app. So, uh, in order to do, um, I guess, any kind of socket stuff, what we, I mean, uh, you don't have to do this, but what you should probably do is set up your uh, static directory so that you can include JavaScript files, so like your media server, um, and set up your uh, template engine, so template rendering engine. Um, so, the way you do that is you just do app dot, I think you do set, is that right? Yeah, set. And uh, so we'll set our uh, views directory so that we can include templates to name. So uh, yeah, th this just sets the views directory where it will look for templates as slash views. So what we need to do is actually create slash views. 
use. There we go. And now let's create uh, our first template. So use um, index uh, dot jade. And I'll explain. Well, the reason it's jade is because if you recall, the template engine they said we were going to use is jade. So by default, express when whatever the name of the um, template engine you're using, that's the extension of the file that it looks for. So if we were using uh, JSHTML, which is another uh, um, a template engine, you'd have to do JSHTML as an extension. So that's why it's uh, index.j. Uh, OK, so we have, uh, uh, we've set up our views directory. Now let's set up our template engine. So set, and then okay, we do view engine and jade. Uh, in the previous tutorial, you had it in uh, an app configure function. Yeah, so uh, you don't have to. The reason you might okay, so in in most examples, and pretty much any example of how to do uh, express configuration, they put it in a configure uh, function. Uh, the reason I think they do it that way, I'm I'm not 100 percent sure of the reason, but I think is because it it's like syntactic sugar for doing namespaces. So if you want to have a a different configuration for your development server versus your uh, application or your, your production server. Wrapping it in a configure lets you do that, um, but you don't. If you don't have namespaces, if you just have one server configuration, I, you can just do it this way. So you don't actually need to do it this way. Uh, sorry, you don't need to wrap it in a configure uh, thing. So yeah, and then the last thing that we need to do is um, set up our static directory. So we've told it where to look for templates. That's views. We've told it what engine it's going to use. Uh, now we just need to tell it. Uh, um, what uh, uh, static to serve a static uh, directory? Um, express static. Sure, I'm not mixing anything up here. Uh, um, And I think that should work. So this just says it will serve uh, the directory slash public. So let's actually create that. So we've created a public directory now and, and the views directory created before. Uh, it will serve everything inside of that public directory as just static files. So that's where you put your JavaScript files, your CSS, your images, whatever. Um, let's see. I think that's everything. All right, I hope I'm not mixing, missing anything. Um, OK, so now we've, we've set up our template engine. So now we don't need to do this kind of gross looking dot send thing. We can actually render a template. So you just do rest dot render. Um, and so if I tried to do that before declaring the template engine, it would, it would blow up. Like it wouldn't let me do it. Um, so we just do index. And it automatically knows that it's supposed to be a dot jade thing. Um, and let's pass some data into it. So Hello. Oh, actually, let's do the same thing we did before. So title, hello world. Ah, OK. So I'm just passing some data into the uh, template. Um, let's see. I think that's everything. Am I doing anything wrong? Yeah. Um, OK. So now let's take a look at our views. And here, um, Jade uses a kind of a weird markup language. Uh, weird to me. Uh, it's, it's kind of different than a lot of other things. Good. Um, so we do head, body, and then you do h1. And I think you just do title. Right? Yeah. It doesn't matter that it's a tab or a space. Apparently, um, I don't know if it differentiates between spaces versus tabs, but the indentation does matter, apparently. <laughs> but I don't know whether it's. I guess let's try it. <laughs> are you tabbing it or are you spacing uh, I, I was tabbing it, but let's put three spaces and see if it likes it. Python usually find spaces, so I'd imagine these guys, this thing's fine too. Okay, so now uh, let's run the server again. Okay, run the server, and now it should do the same thing, but h1. Uh, okay, yeah, so it totally works. So spaces work as well. Uh, cool. Does that make sense? So we created our first template. This, so okay. So to understand what you're reading here, the way it works is it's like a, 
it tries to make HTML nicer. So it's like every time you write, you know, a word, it assumes, okay, that's an HTML tag. And then indenting it is how it does nesting of tags. And then if you want to do variables and stuff, you like use brackets and equal statements. So it's just a different way of, that's why I thought it was kind of awkward. Like, why don't you just write HTML? Like, is it really that hard? Um, might as well just do it that way. Um, but this is just a weird, it's a different kind of markup. Um, okay, so we've created our first template. We have, you know, it's rendering. So the next thing what we want to do is uh, include a bunch of uh, JavaScript files in there, right? So that you can have uh, um, uh, some JavaScript that's, that's included as part of the app. So the way we do it is we do script. And the way it does uh, uh, parameters is this kind of weird way. Uh, and now let's let's look up where the jQuery CDN is. Do you leave no running? Does it run off the copy of the file in memory, or does it watch the file? Um, it's in memory. I don't think it does automatically uh, update. Uh, it might pull the templates in real time. In fact, I'm pretty sure it does. But uh, the JavaScript files, it runs in memory. Uh, OK, so I'm just looking up where jQuery is hosted. That, that's all I'm doing here. Um, so we've looked it up, paste it. OK. Ah. Ah. Sometimes Vim still confuses you, me. You, you. Huh? Then use you instead of deleting the X spaces put in it. Uh, I know I, I used it, but I did something else. And, uh, just <laughs> uh, okay, so we've included the jQuery. Now let's include another file that's like the um, that will be our JavaScript file that we create locally. Um, so script. And notice, remember, we created this directory, this special directory, um, you know, slash public that will include all of our hosted files. So that's where I'll put uh, uh, our new JavaScript files. So uh, equals, um, so we'll put it under slash js, magic.js. Okay, now, oops. So uh, let's create that uh, uh, directory. So we'll put it a public, create that js directory, and now let's create uh, magic.js. OK, so we've created our JavaScript file. Uh, let's uh, go into it now. And uh, we'll do the jQuery thing, document, uh, document dot ready. Function, yeah, it's spelled right. Um, uh, I guess, yeah, let's just leave it up. I don't think we need to do anything else. Okay, so we've done, we've included our Java, jQuery file. We've included uh, uh, a new JavaScript file. Um, now, let's uh, run Node Server to make sure those JavaScript files are actually being included. Uh, let's let's make sure it actually works, or see if I made any kind of stupid mistake. So. Uh, okay. Now let's go here. Nothing is blowing up so far. Uh, it totally worked. Okay. Um, it didn't include magic, though. It's kind of. Yeah, it didn't like that. <laughs> right. Uh, that should be ready. Uh, okay, uh, now that should work. That worked, okay. Um, all right, so now we have a basic Hello World with uh, static files and uh, templates being rendered. Any questions about that? Make sense so far? Yeah. Um, okay, so now we can actually start doing some uh, socket stuff, some WebSocket stuff. Um, 
Yeah, this is going way smoother than the first time. I'm making a lot less uh, <laughs> less muddled uh, uh, is how I'm going through it. Uh, okay, so uh, let's look at the no, uh, the Learn Boost uh, tutorial. Um, it's pretty awesome. Like it shows you like how like ridiculously simple it is to um, um, do to do this uh, uh, WebSocket stuff. Uh, I'll go through kind of this example code that they provide because this is basically what we'll uh, what we'll do. Um, and you can see like it's really it's not a lot of code. Basically, this is all you need to kind of get started with most of the the WebSocket stuff that you need to do. Um, as you can see, so this is on the server side here. Um, as you can see, uh, all it does is it binds socket IO to your, HC, uh, your HTTP server. Um, so you do dot listen dot app or listen app. Um, and th what that does is it sort of injects itself into the middleware. And now when that upgrade request comes in, like when you have an HTTP request and, that, and it re there's a request to be upgraded, this thing interprets it and says, oh, this is totally WebSockets, and then sets up a WebSockets connection. Um, and then it listens on the same port because, like, it listens for upgraded HTTP connections, right? So it listens on the same port as the uh, HTTP server. Um, okay, so you've you've set it up to start listening. Then uh, what you do is you say, okay, uh, socket IO uh, dot sockets dot on connection. So on the event on the connection event, you then emit uh, a message called news. So every time someone connects to the socket IO server, uh, it will immediately send them a message that says news with the, bo with the blob of, of data called hello world. Um, and then if you look on the client side, you see first thing it does is it connects to the socket server and it says on news. So when you receive that uh, event, it just logs it to console and then sends some other event. Um, and that's it. That's all you do. So you connect to the server. On the server, push this event, so it, it's, it's a push uh, message to the client side, and then the client side does something with that event. Um, and as we learned last time, apparently Socket is supposed to just host this file for you, but it didn't actually do that for some reason. So we'll, we'll do the same kind of workaround that we did before. Um, it should be, it should host it, but I, I don't know, I guess for some reason it doesn't. Uh, okay, so uh, what we need to do is let's go back to um, here and put in our socket IO uh, file. So we want to include another JavaScript file. Socket IO. Okay, now we actually have to, you know, put it there. Um, so let's copy it from one of the other apps. Worlds, uh, public JS, uh, socket IO. Let's put it here. So, and then let's move it from here to our public JS. There we go. Um, okay, so now we have socket IO on the included on the client side. So let's put it. Let's do some stuff with it on the server side. Um, so on the server side. All you need to do is, uh, how do you do it? It's kind of it's that weird thing. Um, set it to listen to server. That's what you need to do. Yeah. So we do bar, we'll call it socket server equals, so we'll use the IO and then listen to. Uh, the um, uh, server. And okay, so now we've bound it to um, the, the socket server. And notice, again, this is, uh, this is a, a thing that got me when I was first doing this uh, yesterday. Uh, this, was, uh, this is different than the old versions. Like, see, it's different here. Here you're just supposed to listen to the app, which is Express Create Server. Here you do it slightly differently. Um, so that you have to do it this way or else it won't work in the later versions. Um, okay, so we've created our socket server thing. And now we just need to do, um, well, let's, uh, where do we put it? I guess it doesn't matter. So uh, let's bind uh, that connection event, sockets dot um, on 
connection function data or uh, is it data? Yeah, socket, sorry. Uh, okay, so this is the same thing as in the example. We're just uh, putting uh, an event when whenever somebody connects uh, to the socket server. So let's do, I don't know, console.log connected. Very exciting. And then uh, we do, we send back a message to the socket, to the person that just connected. Um, we'll say hello and send them some data. Okay, so we've now, like on the server side, we now have a basic sort of hello world um, socket thing. There's probably some typos, but looks looks okay from my perspective. Um, okay, so we, we're done with this file. We want to uh, check our uh, .js. Uh, so here, what we need to do is um, I/O. Uh, no, we do socket equals I/O dot net. I think dot connect, and we want to connect to our server, which is. Zero one. Uh, what port are we? Are we port eighty? Yeah. Uh, okay, so we've connected, and then what we want to do is just say socket on that. Um, hello, is it? Hello, yeah. Uh, on that hello event, we just uh, bind a function to I don't know, do something with it. Um, what do we want to do? I don't know. Another console.log. Data. Load. So it should print world when it connects. I think that seems reasonable to everyone. Uh, okay, so let's uh, try it. Oh, wait. Oops. <laughs> Okay, started it, socket IO started, it's awesome. And now let's go here and uh, let's look at the console. Looks like it connected. Yeah, looks like it worked. Uh, why isn't it, oh, there we go, yeah. So it's totally right, nice. Make sense? Um, that's weird, but it didn't work in the other one. What were the differences? Yeah, in the first time it didn't work. Um, yeah, in the first time you had some server listening the app. Oh, yeah. See, that's the <laughs> that, that stupid weird thing you have to do. I, yeah, I probably had app here instead yeah, of server. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, so wild to figure it out. It's just kind of voodoo code. It just You just have to do it that way or else it doesn't work. Um, cool. Okay, so I guess that's that's all for the um, uh, I guess the tutorial. If, unless there are any questions, I guess. Where did you grab socket.io.js? Um, so it's supposed to serve it to you. Actually, let's try it. Maybe it will serve it to you. Maybe that was the problem before. Um, so uh, basically, it, it's included inside of. Um, uh, if you go to the socket IO library, they actually include the distribution uh, binary somewhere here. Socket IO client. So there's a client and the server, and then if you look in the distribution folder, it has your socket IO uh, library here. And then it actually includes it in this, uh, I think, um, let's take a look in here, node modules, socket. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, no, it's actually, it's not in there. Uh, it's in, it's like another nested node. Yeah, there we go, Socket.io client. So, just, so yeah, it's actually included when you install. 
in like a crazy nested directory thing. Um, so you can get it from there, but in theory, it should actually serve it, apparently. So let's see. Um, so socket IO. Uh, does that look right? I think that should work. Totally worked. Nice. Mm, I guess it takes a little while to get the connection. There we go. Yeah, so that was a problem last time too. Cool. Um, yeah, so I guess you don't even need to copy it into a static directory. You just you can actually just uh, have socket IO server it up automatically, which is definitely a lot better because then you don't need to worry about updating them uh, separately. Um, cool. Yeah. Any questions? That's not the information. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and the, the example app that does that snake game thing that we have on in here uh, is, I mean, it uses the same principles. Like, there's not really much more stuff in it. Uh, let's look here. So this is actually uh, <laughs> like some, some game logic. But in terms of the code, it's just kind of, you know, it still uses the same principles. Like you, you have events. You, we don't use channels or anything fancy here. Um, it's just like the the same basic stuff. <laughs> what is that? Stupid collision. <laughs> That's Ivan. Uh, Ivan stuff. Um, yeah, and it, I think I don't know if I mentioned. So it, when you make a, a module, you usually want to create uh, uh, this dependency or this package description file, which says what it uh, depends on. In this case, Express, Socket, I.O., and Jade. Uh, what that does is when you install that package, it will then automatically do all the dependency stuff for you. Uh, but you don't have to have it. It's, it's optional. It's basically a manifest. Yeah, exactly. It, it includes like authors and like just everything about the package. Um, cool. Yeah, so I guess that's, that's everything. Um, I don't know. Was there anyone else that was waiting? Or was that um, everyone? Or do we need to do a third one? I hope not. It's, it's very tiring. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. Um, cool. So I'll go hang up there. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming by. Yes. <laughs> The first time we didn't clap because it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Now it was relatively smooth. Sorry?